Thanks for staying with us, uh, speaking with all divisional police officers in the state at the Lagos um, House, Ikeja. Babajide Sawonlu urged the officers to ensure total enforcement of the ban. The governor told them, after a critical review of our restrictions on Okada activities in the first six local government areas where we restricted them on February 1st, 2020, we have seen that the menace has not abated. Um, the whole of Ikeja, Surulere, Tiosa, Lagos Island, Lag um, Lagos Mainland, and the Papa local government areas have a total ban, and the ban is expected to take effect from June 1st. Do you think this ban will curb, right, the current insecurities that we're having in Lagos State especially, or will it worsen it? That's the question for tonight. Please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wage Africa one with the hashtag Wage Show. So Uti is here. Welcome, Uti. <laughs> like, we need to take you back <laughs> to your bed. <laughs> How are you? I'm here. Yeah, you're here. <laughs> so what was your story again for what's in the news? Um, so, yes, yeah, so the Okada Riders, um, of course, I heard you ladies talking about it, but um, the unrest today in Ojo, mm. um, around the barracks area, when they tried to... Um, following the attempts to seize their um, bikes. Now, the first question for me was, I believe you named five local governments. Mm, I mean, six, yeah. Ojo itself it's is not a local part government, of it, yeah. and it's not part of it. So I wasn't sure what the trigger was, whether it's because these um, Okada riders are not on the inner roads, maybe because they're applying the main Badagri Expressway. Um, it wasn't clear, but of course, there was a lot of fracas. The police were shooting. The Okada riders wearing their masks, throwing stones at the police officers. At last report, I believe um, there were two people dead on, on either side, so two Okada mm. riders and two policemen. I haven't validated that, so I don't know if that's true, but that was the last report that I mm. got. Um, I mean, it's just sad. Mm. I, the, the entire situation, I understand, no, let me not even say I understand. I acknowledge the need to do this, but we often forget that there's a very real problem. So when we ban this, which is a valid means of transportation in this country, we don't have alternatives. These people have to move around. So what's the solution? And that's the responsibility of the government, right? So we can't all be on the roads. Um, okay. But yeah, so uh, there's pushback. And, I mean, I, do, I just think it's a sign of more things to come because mm. these guys will organize, I mean, just hit one Okada or just have an argument with all of them will stop and yeah, you know how gang up. So they already have a hive behavior. So anything that's going to come and attack them, they're just going to come together and they, they have the numbers. Absolutely. So let's see, put a bit of background to the conversation. Prior to now, the ban was in February 2020. And um, the latest ban is supposed to take effect June 1st, 2022. Um, affected areas are Ikeja, Surulere, Etiosa, Lagos mm. Mainland, um, Lagos Island, and uh, Papa. So I think there are six local government areas. Now, um, of course, we, we had shelved the conversation around the young man that was killed, the sound engineer. I think David, that was his name, that was killed in Lekki Admiralty, Lekki Phase mm. 1, and all of that. So for me, um, talking about the Okada ban, I just want us to sit down to just count what it's going to cost us as a people. Because again, the Lagos State government is saying that certain areas that have not been banned yet, that the guys on the, uh, at that, those areas should go start to look for alternative sources of income. Because very soon the ban will get to them. So by then, he believes that they have ample time you know, to find an alternate source of income. And I'm just laughing. I say, ah, oh God. <laughs> do you understand what you're saying? <laughs> or do you know what it is that, you know, people are actually going through on the streets? Yesterday night, I was going home, and um, I had to tee off to see someone quickly. So on my way out, you know, know those traffic stops at the, um, I think this was in the Kate area yesterday. And if you see the guy, he was heavily drunk, banging heavily on my window. I'm sure if that guy had a, um, a stone or something, and probably I was alone, he would probably smash my, ah, they're hungry. I said, give me money. Bah, bah, bah. It was heavily banging on my, the window of my, my car. You know, so 
I mean, the state of insecurity in this country is already bad as it is, right? And now bringing this Okada ban, just at the point where the elections are around the corner, a lot of things are happening at the same time. Do you think this... Yes, we understand that a lot of crimes have been perpetrated using Okada. That one is a given. A lot of people have been robbed, so many things, you know. Mm. But would this not further worsen the security situation that we already have? Because we know that a lot of the drivers of crime right now is hunger, right? And this taking people's livelihood off of them, right, just like that, would further worsen the situation. Or am I wrong to think like that? Who are we starting with? <laughs> Why are you looking at everybody looking at Noma? <laughs> so I'm just going to say one thing. Please, they stab people every day. Please, all of you, when you get home, throw away all your knives. Stop ban, ban knives, no more knives. Mm. Again, it, it's the, the thing for me is really, and we see it all the time in this country, we take the most unimaginative approach to problems. So, Okada is a problem. Okada is a problem. Do we weigh the pros, the cons? What measures of control have we put in place? Things will always happen if they go unchecked. Might I add that? I mean, what happened to trigger this is another form of is jungle justice, and jungle justice is not new. It was in Lagos. At least, let me speak for where I grew up. It was in Lagos long before. Mm. Okada's kid. Mm -hmm. Growing up in the 80s, all they had to say, do you remember when people were being burnt just because somebody shouted Ole? Ole. Mm -hmm. And before you knew it, tire came out, matches came and out, petrol came out, and the person was gone. Mm -hmm. So it is not that jungle justice, is, this is not new. Now what we just have is a unique or, in, or a segment that is now a threat. Mm. But the segment exists today as a solution to a very real problem. We have transportation problems in a mega city. We don't have any other way to move people around in Lagos today other than our roads. Do we have anything else within the city? No, we don't. We have the waterways. Okay, we have the waterways. How effective is the waterways? What percentage of people of can can say that it has really what aided their movement. Yes, use can it. That's use the thing. It. Yeah. Apart from even use it, can, can use, use it. it. Yes, the How capacity. How many routes does it serve? In terms of the ve the, the 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 vehicles or the bus boats that it has, does it? Let's not forget that we keep calling Lagos a mega city. <laughs> Are we ready to transport people in a mega city? I want to flip back to February 2020 when this ban was implemented. People were trekking. People were late to work. And there's nothing you could do. I could not find bike. I could not find anything. I walked. If you, are, if you were inside VI at the time, you will walk from where the bus drops you in Ozumba to wherever inside VI you're, you're going. going. So we have real problems. Our roads cannot take our capacity. The BRT has not solved the problem. The NURTW private buses has not solved the problem. <laughs> so, again, when you rob Peter to pay Paul, it is still the same set of people that are going to pay. So when you say you are trying to curb insecurity one way, it's like jumping from frying pan to fire. Because you had people before who, badly behaved or not, were solving a problem we're earning money, mm. we're adding to the economy. Now you yank that away. So the masses who they were solving a problem for, problem D. People who were earning money before, problem D. People who thought, okay, this will give me security, problem D. Because a man is hungry, you gotta eat one way or the other. Mm. So if the person was okay before to jungle justice and burn one person, that same person has the mind of, I'm hungry, break window, mm. stab woman, whatever. So, I, again, it's just the about ritual. the fixing of the problem. Mm. What is the real root The real cause? problem is that mm. we have a, a huge transportation deficit. Absolutely. But let me hear your thoughts, AC, on this. Okay, my thought. Hmm. This is a very dicey situation because it's like um, we, ha we have a dilemma here. 
basically because of the fact that we have uh, the transport system is not functioning and it's not working to full capacity as it should and we also have the problem with the fact that the individuals who are supposed to be handling the Okada bikes or the means of transportation via Okada they have um, they're badly behaved mm. basically and they flout all rules and regulations that you know that we can think of on the road however Uti said made a valid point but with this curb insecurity I think it will not curb insecurity in the state rather it will escalate it in what context in the context that we have individuals who are not well, um, they are not well skilled. And from wherever they must, some of them have even lost their jobs and decided to use this as an avenue to make ends meet. And Uti said one thing, man must work. They are hungry, they have to make uh, a living. So they would find a way to make things right. However, if we decide to seek solution to this problem, how do we rectify this issue? Mm. I think, or I'm of the thought that instead of banning it outrightly, they should call each association in each environment and call the leaders in each um, inner city, government. local government, and come, let them come together and let them s find a solution whereby they can you know, interact with their members and give them some level of rules and regulations that they must abide by. Because if you look at these Okada riders, one way or the other, they are a society, they are a, a group. However, they are not that organized unless there is a, some sort of fracas or some sort of uproar. Mm. So where we need to, you know, step in is to get the um, leaders to come to the table and seek a solution to this menace and this problem okay. once and for all. So the security threat for these Okada riders is very huge because they do not have any means of identification. Yes. I mean, I, I saw one um, post and I posted it on the group. I said, very interesting because the Hausa community seeks reversal on the Okada mm -hmm. ban mm -hmm. and they're promising. So now they're taking it political, promising mm -hmm. Governor Sanwalu massive votes come the 2023 elections, that if he's able to take back that ban, yeah. you know, they will, they will bring out, they will come out a mass. Mm -hmm. Now, it tells me something. If they are promising that they would um, give him votes, it means that they have voters' cards. cards right? Because you can't vote for and somebody. And they have some promise, means of um, identification. You can't promise votes without voters' cards. Yes. So can we why even can't? start? Yes, why can't we even start from this to say, okay, mm. If you are promising vote, why don't you bring those voters' identification cards and let's mm. see how we can create some form of structure. Mm. And that was why I was saying yesterday that mm. I really loved the strate um, strategic um, path, the, hail the ride hailing services were yeah. going. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the people, they had cleaner, they had more sane riders. Absolutely. They had riders that they had trained, mm -hmm. you know, so they were not just, they were obeying traffic rules, not like what we see today, today. now. You see a rider coming onto an oncoming vehicle and telling and, you to clear and off the way. Right of way. You know, clear, you know, so so if just imagine if they since they are promising this, oh we'll give you votes. They have mm. voters identification cards. So why mm. can't we find a way to translate that into a proper database? that can capture everybody within the local government area. But let mm. me come, um, let's go on a quick break because I would like to open our phone lines and I'll come to you normal when we come back from the break. Stay with us, we'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out, and we are discussing the Okada ban, and we're asking, will this curb insecurity or further worsen it? All right, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at WaySheafco, one of the hashtag WaySheafco. Our phone line is now open. Please, the number to call is 07025-007749. Remember to turn off the volume of your television set so we can hear ourselves. Um, thank you in advance. All right, Noma, so your thoughts on the Okada ban, what do you think would, um, this would do to our security architecture that's 
I believe is non-existent, but <laughs> let's believe it is something there. Uh, well, my quick thought would be in agreement with uh, what Uti and Isi had said earlier. And in addition, I would want this to even be an opportunity for the state government to be proactive because this is an obvious problem and it seems that uh, throughout history we tend to uh, use methods um, that just come up at the top of our heads without actually thinking, like thinking taking a sit back thinking it to through. think things through, to say what can be the more permanent solution to this problem. So we see a lot of cutting of branches without getting to the deep seated issues, the root of the problem. So this can be a, um, a conversation that the state government can have where now that we know that there's a need, of course, just banning Okadas, we rightly said that they have a need that they feed, yeah. actually. Absolutely. But then in a more structured environment mm -hmm. and the kind of people who offer these services, you can't allow someone who just came off the street to obey traffic lights or uh, regulations or to think about the person he's carrying mm. because he's not groomed to be that person. Mm. So how can we hand over that kind of responsibility to people who do not have any capacity to feel into those mm. shoes? Absolutely. Mm. Let me take a call quickly, then I'll come back to you. Youngest old man from Ajegule, thank you for calling. You're live. Good evening. How are we? Hi, we're good. <laughs> All right. Um, the normal way, we say two days, long time no here. Yes, so. <laughs> yes, I've been indisposed these two days already. Work one key person. It is well. But it, it's well, Shari. You see, this Okada thing eh, is, is bigger than everybody thinks so. Mm -hmm. These guys are, they've been able to make it into the life of everybody. They are, they are, they are, let me say they are, they are, they are wolf in sheep's clothing. You see, these guys tend to help, but they are doing more, more harm. Okada, Okada people are kind of informants to the criminal cartel. Okada people, they enter places where you don't even know, where you don't even think. They, they, is, they like this cold thing. If you have a quarrel with an Okada man, in the next three seconds, these guys are above 50 in front of you and they support themselves. Mm. I really like their strength of, um, of brotherhood. Mm. But man, these guys are something else. I want to tell you, I can remember in the early 90s when Okada started, they used to use the uh, whistle. We used to call them Okada when we were kids. We used to follow them. It was a sincere thing, trying to help out in those days. You understand? But for a time, it became something else where some people, do you know that? Okay, just think about it. When they will seize like 1,000 bikes, and the next day you see that 1,000 bikes, 1,000 bikes replaced. You, you never think how, you know, mm. how, how? They don't even have the money to buy it. Each bike is almost four hundred thousand. So I don't really know how they are. They are. They are. They are. Who are their sponsors? Works, but this thing is bigger, and they should not treat it like uh, the way they are just banning it. You know, they should go into investigation and follow it holistically. This is a cartel. These guys are bigger than we think. And let me tell you, those people they they do a lot of things. They even they even ship weapons. I don't just want to go into details, but I know that this Okada is bigger than what you think. You Thank understand? You. And Thank you should you. calm down and investigate. See, you get person will get BP. If you come Okada and finish, calm down. The BP go double. Hmm. Thank because you. Because so of the way they drive and their confidence in time in times of destruction. Look at the, the, the problem they had in Abuja the other day. It's still the same Okada. Thank you. You know, so I mean when he was talking about Okada and <laughs> You know, I remember when I hired one driver one time. Apparently, I asked the driver, what were you riding before? He was, he was driving Okada. Almost, the guy almost threw me inside of Milan Bridge. I was just praying to God that let me get home safely. As soon as I got home, I collected my khaki. I said, thank you. Service is no longer needed. But you see, I, I, I know that my, my previous um, area where I just moved out from, the, when we were done doing the roads and all of that, the, all the Okada guys were asked to go get guarantors. You understand that going forward, anybody that was going to go into that estate, you understand, would have a proper identification, your number on your jersey. We we're going to print out the, the what's it called, the jacket for them with their numbers and a proper. So they just needed to bring at least one guarantor to ensure that the person could be identified. Do you know that not even one single Okada person 
was able to meet that criteria. So just imagine the amount of, so I understand where youngest old man is coming from. It is all, it is bigger than we think, but we need to sit down and also be strategic about it. But let me take, um, I think we have another caller from Benin. Austin, you're live. Thank you for calling. Good evening to you all. Hi, good evening. Yeah, I, I've been wondering why none of you have picked the form, eh? It's still uh, open, though. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, um, in your in your opening um, in your opening address, you talked about the Akata general who is who has allegedly allegedly uh, stolen uh, eighty billion. They would say it's more than that. Now I don't know why Nigeria has not bothered to find out what China did differently to be able to uh, curb corruption in that country. And China right now is becoming a world power. We are even running to China to borrow money from them. And we are not ready to find out what China did to fight corruption in that country. Is that not funny? So uh, the, earlier Nigeria, uh, the earlier we are able to do something about corruption in Nigeria, the better for us. Thank you so much. Good evening. Thank you. Okay, so back to the Okada matter. Corruption is a big issue. Even this one we were talking about Okada. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, you know, shouldn't there be a strategy? Since you know that this is a huge cartel mm -hmm. and it will pose a very big security risk. That's why we're saying, can we clean up that system? Because you cannot take away the fact that they are actually meeting a need. If not, mm -hmm. they will not be in their numbers. Absolutely. They in droves, these people. Yeah. So how do we solve that problem? Which was what I stated earlier, basically, that the state government or the federal government can actually, you know, or the, let me work with the state government, basically, so they can actually talk to every um, individual or um, local government chairman, basically, to, you know, bring in the, um, the head of each, um, uh, what's it called now, each... Um, the area, the each locality. area, yeah. each area, they should bring in the head of the um, Okada riders. So you don't agree from that, that they should ban it? I don't agree that okay. it should be banned. For now. For let now. me take uh, Loma. But, yeah, let me take Loma okay. from Abia State. You're live. Yeah. Good evening, my beautiful sister. Good evening, oh. Yeah, this is Loma, Abia State. Whom I have presented to you. Um, banning Okada. It's not a problem. But particular administration, the present administration that people are suffering before you ban anything. Have you put palliative in place so that these people will not turn to hunt those that ban it? Because not only banning it is a problem. It is the after effect of banning it. You see, a lot of unemployed youth is sold to this or that in order to make ends meet. Yeah. Before you ban such things, make sure you stabilize them. We are already, we know the youth, the, the unemployment youth we have in this country is a time bomb waiting to explode. So a, 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 a word is enough for a white. Before you ban it, put the electric in place. There is something wrong in banning. Make sure you don't do those things that are right before you ban it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. There was something uh, the last caller, the, the caller before the last caller actually said that yes, it's a cartel. We all agree that it is a cartel. We all understand that it is a cartel. But however, each cartel then gets Oga. Mm. So if they can actually call on each individual or the one that is manning the local government, the each, each local government chairman or council chairman should have these um, information should yes should have that information basically so what they can do is reach out to each of these um, local government chairmen or council chairmen who whatever they are and they can in turn go to the grassroots and reach out to each of the members then we can now actually so reach an problem, agreement basically and i need just to help me understand this yeah problem. These guys, they don't speak the Hausa language that I understand. Because everybody keeps mm. on saying that they are from Northern descent, they are from Northern descent. They I've said that they are Niger, I from some, Niger Republic. I have heard some of them. Mm. It is not your regular Hausa that they speak. It is mm. not the Hausa that we know in Nigeria that they speak. But let me take Peter from Benin then. I'll, mm. I'll please be thinking about the solution. Because mm. 
how we want to find this fight this problem mm. is a big issue. I don't even know where to start from. Mm. Peter, you're live. Yeah, good evening, ladies. Good evening. I must start from the hilarious part. Oh, and when you said Lakpa Lakpa, you are really an Edo woman. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. For, for the topic we are discussing tonight, um, there's no solution. Let's not deceive ourselves. It's election period. The present government of Lagos State, they need these people. They benefit so much from them. If I tell you the IGR they get from them, the cows. So if at 62 years we are still talking about Lagos, that is one of the biggest cities in Africa, and even in the world, they call it a metropolitan city. Well, Lagos, Lagos, everybody wants to go to Lagos. And why do you have a lot of Okada men in Lagos? Where you are buying a bike in Benin or River State for 10 Naira, in Lagos you can get it for Naira. So where the entrance into any business is so lax, you see a migration of people coming there. Mm. It is not possible for you to reduce the minutes or to even call their issue. I'll give you some little statistics. Ali Moshua is 11 point something million. Lagos has recognized by constitution 20 local governments. Ali Moshua, the biggest is 11 point something. And the six local governments, they have said they have bound what is the demographics of those of, of those local governments? Mm. It is not possible. The way forward is simple. If within one week, two officials of the federal government have taken 127 billion, imagine a legal state having 127 billion investing in transportation. Mm. Let just just think about that, my sister. We are not ready to change this country. The monster will be, the, the politicians have been riding on the monster. And the monster has grown so big like a big elephant in the room. And it is eating them now. Do you know how many people have died? That young man, the sound engineer died. That was going straight green, this thing. But I can tell you for free that nothing will happen. Because the brick state of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, I want to compare ourselves to South Africa. South Africa is less than 100 million. They generate 55,000 megawatts of electricity. Nigeria of 200 million generates 4,000 4, megawatts. When Obasa just took it to 6,000, it was a big celebration. There are some basic things we've never started. It will, we, let's just pray and see how 2023 will go. And let's see how the next governor will tackle this problem. Hmm. He's a big monster. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Uti, I've not heard you in a minute. But he seems very tired today. <laughs> the previous, um, I believe it was 2008, Lagos has been shopping this idea of train along the Badaiburi Expressway, that corridor. They've been shopping that conversation. But at least I know where I encountered the conversation for the first time was when I saw the plan. And that was in 2008. It is now 2022. The part of the road that they started from when you get down the bridge at um, Amu, the one they did is degrading already. The train has not run on. Not one train. <laughs> it has gone on it. The train track is not yet completed. That's the one coming towards Marina. Mm. The train, the track, the, the one they did is already degrading. As far as, I mean, I haven't been in that direction, but even seeing from the reports today um, of the um, unrest in Ojo, right, you can see that they've done some work on the roads um, up until that extent. But this is almost 15 years later. Mm. So even the next governor in 2023, if we use that as a historical data, mm. as a yardstick, thank you. It means that this, go even if he does two terms, they're being from Surule. I think yeah, here is the first time caller. Thank you so much for calling. <laughs> ah, problem. <laughs> David, are you there? You're live. Hello, good evening. Hi, David. Thank you for calling. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down now. 
You're live. Thank you for calling, Deji. Oh, Deji, thank you for calling. You're okay, live. Good evening. How are you guys doing? Thank you for calling. Fine. Go ahead, please. Okay. okay. Um, for me, I think it's the right time for the government to actually ban these people. Hmm. I'd almost lost my life because of this Okada people. Almost lost my life. Oh, wow. Last year, I was driving towards um, Ikui from Cameron Road, trying to join um, Girard. And this Okada guy was coming on a top speed from Samo. The next thing I had was a bank for my car. 8 a.m. in the morning, going to work. From that thing, I called on the, the um, onlookers to help me. We took these guys into my car and drove like a mad person to the police hospital at Falmore Bridge. And I told them to start chasing these people. The rider and the passenger. 8 a.m. in the morning. The next thing these guys did was to and gather themselves in front of the hospital that I was not going to go out. That they were going to burn my car. I'm telling you that day I spent 158000 to treat these people. At the end of the day, they still told me that they had to take me to the station at Ikoyi because they had one outside guy there as a BPO. That because whenever this kind of a thing happened, they needed to take the person to that police station. So I followed them there. On getting to the police station, the DCO, who happens to be a woman, now asked me, what have I done? I told the lady, I've been spending money to treat the rider and the passenger this morning. And the woman was asking me, she asked me a question that, Oga, are you aware that Okada is banned in Lagos? And by the way, how did you find your way? How did Okada find their way to Ikoyi, hmm. Kingsway Road? I'm Thank telling you. you, these people, they need to ban them first. Yeah. In those days, when I was young, I was born in the Butemeta. We trek to Kostin hmm. to get a bus to wherever you are going to. Even in the UK, thank you so much. Sadly, Deji, we've run out of time. Even in the UK, I mean, that was the root shock that I <laughs> that woke me up. When you get to the place, you can't find any Okada. You have to trek. So you must make sure that you have your routes correctly so that at least you take the nearest bus, you stop at the nearest bus stop to your to wherever it is that you're going. But let's take some comments quickly because we ran out of time. Someone on YouTube says that Cindy uh, Albert says, first time watching you ladies. Good. Love your analysis. Good job. Thank you so much, Cindy. Um, we have some more comments. Uh, <laughs> oh. go ahead quickly. Okay, good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. As regards the ban on Okada riders, whether it will curb insecurity or not, it's not the issue. Before you think of banning Okada riders, you must travel the traffic system. Like I said in the previous show, Okada riders know how to maneuver traffic. If you're in a commercial vehicle or driving your own car with the madness of Lagos traffic, that is a total nightmare you cannot meet up. The governor has to solve the traffic system. If not, this ban, trust me, it will not work. I can understand that there is a disadvantage concerning this Okada system because they don't hear a word at all. That is my own take for now. My name is Danielle. Thank you, Danielle. Okay. All right. This says, um, good evening, everyone in the studio. Uh, the only thing we need for now is to pray for, is, is pray. If not, this our country, Nigeria, bar tribalism, uh, and a religion will... I don't understand what he's saying. A religion will cause uh, mean things. I don't understand what he's trying to say. But he's a, I think he's a Muslim and he mm. says, um, I'm Talib Jibila from uh, Abuja. Thank you, Thank you. Talib. Go ahead, Nama. All right, this is from Bissi and she says, Good evening, ladies. I think the Okada riders should be registered in small units yes. with sort of uniform. The government should restrain uh, from banning them. The masses will suffer it. Most people that close late from work will be attacked, especially women drivers. Mm. I hope we'll get to a point where people in authority will plan and be strategic in planning without just talking.
talking carelessly. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks and have a good night. Right? Good evening, ladies. I want us to know that more than 75% of them are not from Nigeria. So, mm. I mean, this is a conversation that would be ongoing because we can't really end it in just a few minutes. Mm. But the thing is, I believe the government has to be really strategic about it. Totally. Don't just ban, but put put in stringent me measures. So when they flaunt this thing, it's mm. easy way to say, you know what, we'll revoke your license for life. You and know? track them down. Yeah. The question is, is the government ready, ready to do what it Absolutely. takes to cope this situation? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, everyone. A country without state security would always be in danger of crime. If the government ban Okada riders, what will they give to support their basic living standard? However, most of them are foreigners brought in by the ruling government eight years to fraud the last elections. They are out of control and they would increase crime in the society. This is Ade from the UK. Thank you so much, Ade. Thank you so much, ladies. Uti Isi Nama. All right, so before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagrams at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversations. Now, if you missed today's mm -hmm. quote, here it is again. Security is mostly a superstition. It does not exist in nature. Uti will always believe this, right? Uh, are you secure? <laughs> Do you believe you are secure? You are secure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you guys. <laughs> see you guys tomorrow, live at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. <laughs>